Right, this is a clarification of La Belle Dame Sans Regret, which I explained uh, with a capo on three. So I called the chords, for example, I called this chord an A minor seventh, this chord an E minor, uh, F sharp diminished. The reality is that if you look at the position of the capo, these are not the, the real names of the chords, because this chord, strictly speaking, is not an A minor seven, it's a, a C minor seven. This is a G minor seven, etc. Okay, so in order to remove any confusion, I'm going to do what I did with other songs like Meu Samba Tortu, and I'm going to explain the song without a capo. Okay, and this way there's no ambiguity as to what the chord names are. I'm going to go through it quickly, actually, because uh, with not so much detail, because the details already been given. But um, I'll go through the song with starting with an A minor seven. Second chord is an F sharp diminished. Okay, this is a an E minor to which I've added a 9 and then we move to an E minor but I like to add the 6 here you don't have to but I think it's, it sounds really nice in this song and then we go to a C major 7 and then we move to this chord okay I think I mentioned the fact that this is a bit like a, a B7 and it is a B7 actually with the G note here for the melody but actually the reality is that it has got if you play the C chord here it becomes a C sorry it becomes a B9 flat 9 a B7 flat 9 okay to which we've added a, a G note here as a melody note okay so that's you could see it as, uh, as that or you could see it as a, the F sharp diminished either okay so so that's how I played and then I moved to uh, an E7 sus okay so this is an E7 Okay. Another E7 here with the, in a different shape it's because I'm trying to keep the melody going up here. Okay. This is a G diminished, F sharp diminished. Okay. So this is a G. Major 7, okay, I'm not playing the bass. And you will notice that I'm not really playing, uh, surprisingly, we've got some E minor chords here, but I'm not playing the E bass because somehow, for some reason, actually, the B uh, is very effective in this song. Huh? Okay, so back to the G E minor. So we said G major 7, but with the sliding melody here. Okay, now this is where we get to the interesting part of the song, the complicated part, where we have four chords in succession. Da, da. So you can either play, this is a C sharp minor with a flat C sharp minor 7. C sharp minor seven with a flat five, okay, which you can play either like this or like this, same thing. So this is chord number one. So it's just the we've got a moving line here because we're adding a C. So you could play it like this. Pour m'expliquer. So I tend to play it. Pour m'expliquer. So what do you call this chord? To be honest, it's quite complicated. 
I, I think uh, I, I would call it a C sharp minor seven flat five and uh, with a major seven added. But I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that, you know, if you took it as a C chord, uh, if you looked at it more as a C chord and you've moved this, uh, you put a C sharp, you've added a flat nine. Huh? So you could call it C with a flat nine. So I don't really know how to call this chord uh, really. Huh? But uh, this is what I've seen Dominic Miller play uh, recently on a video. Huh? Or, or at least the equivalent in the right key, okay? Pour m'expliquer ta vie. This is an A flat major seven, okay? And we haven't finished because there's still one chord here which, which is played like this, okay? Now, again, what, what do you call this chord? For me, this chord looks very much like a, I mean, if you take, take it as a C and uh, you take the G and flatten it, so that's like a, a flattened five, a C with a flattened five, or if you look at it like a D9, for example, uh, this is like a D7-9, uh, the seven being here on the bass, and uh, doesn't change very much actually because this is the seventh uh, is here and we've got two sevenths here okay so once again I think these chords have uh, are complicated have complicated sounds and complicated names and they they can sound dissonant I have to say um, when let's play them again this is dissonant this is not and then we this is dissonant again, huh? so I think that these dissonances do exist in the song, but once you blend the whole music together and the singing, uh, the dissonance is less uh, obvious and less maybe bothersome. Huh? So let's start the song from the beginning. Ba -ba. the seventh B seventh so I hope that this helps